start with John Krause. Brad, a uh, bunch of guys there on the in injury report that were kind of borderline. Who's in and who's out tonight? Uh, um, Fournier's out still. Rob Williams is out still. Um, Kimba's out. And um, Marcus has been – I've been told he's likely, so he's going to come in, feels pretty good, looks like he's probably going to play. Is there anybody else I'm missing? No, nobody else was listed. That's good. All right. We'll go Mark Murphy. Hi, Brad. Um, what does the week look like for Evan Fournier? And if you are indeed having a practice, how does that work into bringing him back and Jabari for that matter? Evan has his final or whatever the tests that you have to go through to come back and be cleared to come back from a medical perspective um, in the next couple of days. And then I don't know if he'll be able to join us for practice or not when we practice again on Wednesday. Um, even if that's the case, I would say he's probably doubtful for Thursday and limited beyond that, you know, for, I don't, I don't know if he'll be able to play Friday or not. We'll just see. Um, that'll be determined by our doctors, by, Obviously, he has to pass all the tests and then um, in conjunction with him. Uh, and then Rob, um, we are hopeful, will be back on Thursday. Um, and I don't know if he'll also be a guy that's limited um, when he comes back or not. Adam Himmelsbach. Hey, Brad. Um, what did you appreciate about um, Daniel and Javante, obviously, particularly Daniel, given the, the – time he was here and the role he had um, during their time in Boston? Yeah, I think, first of all, both of them are terrific teammates, um, terrific guys. They practice hard. Um, they play hard. Uh, they really care about team success. Um, they're guys that people were attracted to and really liked, and it made the trade deadline day very difficult um, in a lot of ways, Teague as well. Um, Daniel specifically, I just think, you know, um, he was a guy that you saw from his first year, you could throw him in the game behind Baines and Horford. And he, um, you know, always had a pretty good impact. He was quick to the rim. Uh, he'd block a shot. You didn't think he was going to get to, et cetera. But last year he took off and, um, really played a huge role on that team. I thought that he was a big reason why we were defensively ranked where we were. I think that we have, though our defense has gotten better here, we, we are still learning to communicate as well as he did and, and direct as well as he does. Um, but, uh, you know, he's a guy we miss, but um, I'm happy for him. He's playing really well there. He's playing some four with Vucevic that started the last few games and, and uh, also playing some five when Vucevic goes to the bench. So he's a very versatile player um, who cares about winning. So it's like he's a guy that you want on your team, you know, and I'm happy for him and happy for them. Chuck Zorski. Coach, good evening. I do the uh, radio play-by-play -play for the Bulls, so thank you very much. Um, obviously, Jabari is from Chicago, as you know, great high school player here. Can you talk a little about him and, and the Celtics and how this evolved into him becoming a member of your team? I know you probably answered this the other night, so I apologize for you being repetitive, but um, can you talk a little about him? Yeah, I mean, I probably – I don't know if I um, – I, I usually would make the recruiting rounds through Chicago and stop by Simeon a couple times. I'm sure when he was a young, young guy, but I don't remember him there. But I, I certainly um, have always been a fan of his game. I think we all have. He's been through some tough times with regard to the injuries and with regard to, um, you know, playing – you know, uh, whether it's in Chicago, Atlanta, or then obviously Sacramento playing less or not getting quite the same opportunity. And so, you know, we saw it as an opportunity to um, not only sign a guy for the rest of the season, but also for next year and do our, do our part to make, you know, hopefully make our team better in certain situations and against certain matchups, especially as the season wanes here, um, but also to help. Uh, him kind of, as I said the other night, get his groove back, you know, and 
Uh, he's a guy that can score. He's a guy that's got shiftiness in one-on-one -on -one matchups in the post and in the mid post. And he's great on the baseline. Um, and there are things he's got to improve um, to, to play in the most meaningful games at the most meaningful times. Um, but he's a good guy. Uh, he's a good worker. He's excited to be here. And we're excited that he chose to come here. Final two questions for coach. We'll go to Gary Washburn. Hey, Brad. Um, the package that you were apparently offered at IU got released on Saturday, and there was a lot of collective whoa and wows. Is there something to the NBA game, Brad, over the last eight years that have just has made you kind of like think, I'm not leaving here? Like, this is obviously you're dedicated to Boston, but just coaching the league, coaching grown men that has just drawn you that maybe you didn't think would draw you when you accepted the job? Well, first of all, I was never offered a package, so that's all news to me. Um, secondly, you know, I wasn't going to leave anyways. Um, and the reason being is because this place, regardless if it was a pro organization or a college, has been so good to our family, so good to me. And we owe them, especially in the middle of it at the time, a very trying season, you know, that is, you know, right in the middle of a pandemic, we owe them to stay the course. And so, you know, I don't know how long I'm going to coach. I don't know how long I'm going to, you know, coach in the NBA. I don't know how long they'll want me to coach in the NBA. Um, don't know what I'll do after that. Maybe I'll figure out something new, but right now I am, um, uh, you know, I'm thrilled and to be the Celtics head coach. And it is a great challenge and a great responsibility. Um, and so, you know, try to minimize all the distractions around that. But, um, you know, I was never offered that. So I don't know where that came from. Final question, Trey Dart. And Brad, along those challenges you're referring to, there's, there's been so much change you guys have, have had to deal with throughout this year. You, you still don't have your full complement of players on the roster. Still managed to win eight of nine right now in this stretch. Is there anything you could point to that you feel has separated this run maybe to, to other points of adversity this year? I said this the other day. I just think we've stayed together. You know, I think we've you – know, it's so easy with the expectations on the outside and with, you know – guys struggling, guys being sick, the COVID illnesses, the injuries to pull apart. And um, there has never been any of that. At our, at our worst times, we were our most vulnerable and our most reachable. And that was across the board with our whole team. And um, I think that that's why we're where we are, um, where we're playing a little bit better here. Now, we have 15 games left. You know, we're not, you know, we'll see how we're playing when, ever the season ends and we'll see how we end up. But I don't expect this team to pull apart. I've, I've seen it get pretty low and not pull apart. And that's really encouraging. And so um, I believe that, you know, if we can get healthy and we can continue just maintaining this kind of attitude that we could be a nuisance when it's all said and done. I don't know what that means, but it could be interesting at least. All right, we'll wrap it up right there. Thanks, Coach. Yep.